Hello, my name is Janina. I'm an iOS developer from Amsterdam. And today we will discuss improving scrolling performance, specifically through optimizing for the GPU. The purpose of this talk is not to give you a tool that you should blindly use in 100% of cases, but it is to give you a better understanding of the lower level goings on and a technique uh, that in specific cases could give you some gains. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I currently work for a Dutch payment processing company called Adyen. Uh, I also have experience working for a couple of agencies for clients uh, such as Audi and De Beers, and I was part of the launch team for Apple Music. So let's begin. In this talk, we will first talk about what are the CPU and the GPU and what are their roles in UI. We will talk about what causes scrolling issues. Uh, we will then talk about how to actually optimize for the GPU, and I will show you some actual code. Uh, we will discuss exactly how much uh, improvement can you expect by taking this approach. And we will lastly discuss when this is actually useful. But first, before you do any sort of CPU, GPU optimizations, uh, there are some things you should do that will probably take care of the vast majority of your scrolling issues. So UI table view and UI collection view have really powerful APIs uh, that are enriched every single year. So first, you should be using methods like uh, estimated row height and will display cell, etc. cetera. Uh, second of all, you should be minimizing transparencies. So uh, use the built-in debug tools in the simulator to figure out where views are transparent when they don't need to be, uh, and color them solid, uh, because that will save you processing time for blending. Uh, you should also fix all pixel misalignment. Uh, uh, same thing, uh, use the built-in tools uh, in the simulator to identify this. Um, and so. Pixel misalignment happens when your frame starts or ends not on a full pixel. And uh, the reason this is an issue is because in that case, instead of having a single color for that pixel, uh, the colors from adjoining pixels are pulled in to compute uh, the actual color. So this is a very expensive operation, and you want to avoid it. Um, and this usually happens, like maybe if you try to center a view and you divide it by two uh, and got some number that's a fraction. Uh, so always round down or round up um, to uh, get rid of this. And of course, eliminate nice-to-haves. Maybe you're working with a client who has wiggle room in their requirements, and uh, you can identify potential issues uh, before starting to code, and maybe there's some wiggle room there. So that was like uh, uh, performance 101. And now let's talk about the CPU and the GPU. So uh, the CPU, or the central processing unit, is uh, the brains of your device. It's responsible for all logic and calculations. And the GPU, or the graphics processing unit, it does all the rendering and animation. So scrolling, pinching, uh, um, panning, zooming, that kind of stuff. Um, and the GPU was actually created to assist the CPU in performing these expensive rendering uh, operations. So you have your hardware, uh, and the CPU and the GPU uh, live in the hardware level, obviously. And uh, basically, the GPU's final task is to take textures from the CPU and compute the color of every single pixel and hand that information off to the display hardware. So on top of that, we have low-level libraries like core animation and core graphics, and they all route their work either through the CPU or the GPU. So core animation, for instance, is an abstraction on the GPU, and core graphics is an abstraction on the CPU. And then you have your high-level libraries like UI kits, etc. Uh, so when it comes to UI and to layout, the CPU calculates frames and converts them all to textures. And the GPU then takes all those textures, composites, so blends, does anti-aliasing, overlaying, etc., and displays them. So as such, 
there are two reasons why you could be experiencing performance issues. Either the CPU is spending too much time preparing the cells and doing layouts, or the GPU has to perform too many expensive rendering operations. For the former, uh, there's so much to be said, and we're not going to go into it, so we will only focus on the latter. And the way to mitigate the burden on the GPU is to reduce the number of subviews. So to flatten your view hierarchy and have as few uh, actual views as possible that then need to be rendered. So, what does this actually mean? Uh, I made here a sample app. Uh, this is table view. Uh, it has table view cells. Um, there's a dynamic number of labels. Sometimes, uh, some, sometimes the creator is there, sometimes it's not. Uh, single image. Two of the elements have rounded corners, one has a shadow, and one has a border. So we're adding about um, either six or seven subviews to the cell every time. So the traditional approach is just to have your table view cell uh, and to do all the logic in layout subviews. And then if you want to do the borders and the corner radius, uh, you would be operating directly on the CA layer. And if you want to optimize for the GPU, uh, in that case, we'll go with the approach where we'll have a single subview, and we'll override the draw rect, and we will draw all our elements directly into it. Um, so, and then we will use things like CG context uh, to perform the kind of more fancy stuff like the corners and the uh, shadows. So. Um, and then the table view cell code becomes that you only have a single view uh, that the uh, GPU will receive um, as a texture. And by the way, the reason you should overwrite uh, draw rect in the UI view rather than the table view cell is because that way you can still take advantage of the uh, out of the box uh, cell selection and editing. So how do we measure frame rates? Um, in instruments, there's a core animation tool that does this. Um, actually, in the release notes for Xcode 9.3.1, it mentions that this will be uh, deprecated, but currently it works, and uh, maybe Apple will release something even better soon. Um, and you should run this on an actual device rather than a simulator, because on the simulator, you will be measuring your computer's resources and not the devices. Um, and visually, what GPU bottlenecks look like is um, you will have low but consistent frame rates. So how do the two approaches perform? I ran this on my iPhone 10, and they were comparable. There was no difference. There was, there's no reason to do this on iPhone 10. But I also have uh, iPad 2. And when I ran this um, on my iPad, uh, using the traditional approach, uh, I got about 21 frames per second. And at its peak usage, the GPU usage was 98%. When I ran this again, uh, when I ran the optimized version, uh, I got 36 frames per second. Uh, which is still not 60, of course, but then you would do additional optimizations, um, and it's significantly better than the alternative. And the GPU usage at most was 8%, and it was usually between 1% and 3%. And so there's one more uh, player in, the, in laying things out, and that's auto layout. Um, I rewrote the app again using auto layout this time. Um, as you may have guessed it, auto layout performed the worst of everything. Uh, it was only 17 frames per second. Uh, and the reason for this is because auto layout uses a complex uh, mathematical solver to translate all the constraints into frames. And with every constraint, the, uh, the complexity um, increases significantly. And even the order in which constraints are applied can impact uh, uh, the performance, basically. So, and one note on accessibility. Uh, obviously, if you have a single subview, you're not going to be able to take, care, to take advantage of the out-of-the-box uh, accessibility for all your labels. So, in that case, you need to think how to get creative. Maybe uh, a single accessibility element is enough. Maybe you need to split your views into uh, 
other subviews and group things together. Um, you need to think about the trade-offs, basically. And um, so, basically, when should you use this? Uh, by no means sh should this be your new go-to way of writing cells. Uh, this is. This approach is not new, and core graphics has been around for a long time. Uh, so it's a bit of an obscure approach uh, that will help you in very specific cases. So first of all, like in my case, I was optimizing for a very old device. Maybe you don't want to optimize for iPad 2, but maybe that's a requirement of your client. Uh, second of all, displaying a large number of cells. So, like, in theory, the number of cells uh, shouldn't really matter because we have cell reuse, but when you have a really large number of cells and as you're scrolling, you're able to have speed bumps, and so the speed goes up, and obviously the faster you scroll, the more it's noticeable that frames are being dropped. And when your cells are rich in content. If your cells will only have a couple of labels, don't bother, this is not going to make a huge difference in performance. But for a cell like mine, there was a difference. Uh, so, what is the takeaway here? Um, this approach is basically about balancing the load between the CPU and the GPU. So using instruments to identify exactly where your bottlenecks are, and if they're on the GPU, need to investigate where and how to help with that. If you do decide that you need to alleviate the burden on the GPU, you, the best way to do this is by flattening your view hierarchy into as few views as possible, meaning as few textures as possible. And if you do go over this way, you do need to think about whether or not this will be beneficial. So this is a heavy-handed approach. The trade-offs are more code complexity, uh, perhaps some losses in accessibility. Um, so you really need to think about what are the trade-offs, will you benefit from it, and should you go with this approach. On that note, thank you all very much for your time and attention. Thank you, Anya. Thank you.